NOSPO, Wikipedia article audio. A NOSPO effect is said to occur when negative expectations of the patient regarding a treatment cause the treatment to have a more negative effect than it otherwise would have. For example, when a patient anticipates a side effect of a medication, he slash she can suffer that effect even if the medication is actually an inert substance. Both placebo and nospo effects are presumably psychogenic, but they can induce measurable changes in the body and the brain. One article that reviewed 31 studies on nospo effects reported a wide range of symptoms that could manifest as nospo effects including nausea, stomach pains, itching, bloating, depression, sleep problems, loss of appetite, sexual dysfunction, and severe hypotension. Mental states such as beliefs and expectations can strongly influence the outcome of disease, the experience of pain, and even success of surgery. The similarly named concept, the placebo effect, is said to occur when positive expectations improve an outcome. Etymology and Usage Response Effects Side Effects of Drugs Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity Pain Ambiguity of Medical Usage Ambiguity of Anthropological Usage Notes the term NOSPO was coined by Walter Kennedy in 1961 to denote the counterpart to the use of placebo a substance that may produce a beneficial, healthful, pleasant, or desirable effect. Kennedy emphasized that his use of the term NOSPO refers strictly to a subject-centered response, a quality inherent in the patient rather than in the remedy. That is, Kennedy rejected the use of the term for pharmacologically induced negative side effects such as the ringing in the ears caused by quinine. That is not to say that the patient's psychologically induced response may not include physiological effects. For example, an expectation of pain may induce anxiety, which in turn causes the release of cholecystokinin, which facilitates pain transmission. In the narrowest sense, a NOSPO response occurs when a drug trial subject's symptoms are worsened by the administration of an inert, sham, or dummy treatment, called a placebo. According to current pharmacological knowledge and the current understanding of cause and effect, a placebo contains no chemical that could possibly cause any of the observed worsening in the subject's symptoms. Thus, any change for the worse must be due to some subjective factor. Adverse expectations can also cause the analgesic effects of anesthetic medications to disappear. The worsening of the subject's symptoms or reduction of beneficial effects is a direct consequence of their exposure to the placebo, but those symptoms have not been chemically generated by the placebo. Because this generation of symptoms entails a complex of subject internal activities, in the strictest sense, we can never speak in terms of simulator-centered NOSPO effects, but only in terms of subject-centered NOSPO responses. Although some observers attribute NOSPO responses to a subject's gullibility, there is no evidence that an individual who manifests a nospo slash placebo response to one treatment will manifest a nospo slash placebo response to any other treatment, i.e., there is no fixed nospo slash placebo responding trait or propensity. McGlashan, Evans and Dorn found no evidence of what they termed a placebo personality. Also, in a carefully designed study, Lasagna, Mosteller, von Felsinger, and Beecher, found that there was no way that any observer could determine, by testing or by interview, which subject would manifest a placebo reaction and which would not. 
Experiments have shown that no relationship exists between an individual's measured hypnotic susceptibility and their manifestation of nospo or placebo responses. It has been shown that, due to the nospo effect, warning patients about side effects of drugs can contribute to the causation of such effects, whether the drug is real or not. This effect has been observed in clinical trials. According to a 2013 review, the dropout rate among placebo-treated patients in a meta-analysis of 41 clinical trials of Parkinson's disease treatments was 8.8%. A 2013 review found that nearly 1 out of 20 patients receiving a placebo in clinical trials for depression dropped out due to adverse events, which were believed to have been caused by the NOSPO effect. Evidence suggests that the symptoms of electromagnetic hypersensitivity are caused by the NOSPO effect. Verbal suggestion can cause hyperalgesia and allodynia as a result of the NOSPO effect. NOSPO hyperalgesia is believed to involve the activation of cholecystokinin receptors. In a paper, Stuart Williams and Pod argue that using the contrasting terms placebo and nospo to label inert agents that produce pleasant, health-improving, or desirable outcomes versus unpleasant, health-diminishing, or undesirable outcomes, is extremely counterproductive. For example, precisely the same inert agents can produce analgesia and hyperalgesia, the first of which, from this definition, would be a placebo, and the second a nospo. A second problem is that the same effect, such as immunosuppression, may be desirable for a subject with an autoimmune disorder, but be undesirable for most other subjects. Thus, in the first case, the effect would be a placebo, and in the second, a nospo. A third problem is that the prescriber does not know whether the relevant subjects consider the effects that they experience to be desirable or undesirable until some time after the drugs have been administered. A fourth problem is that the same phenomena are being generated in all the subjects, and these are being generated by the same drug, which is acting in all of the subjects through the same mechanism. Yet because the phenomena in question have been subjectively considered to be desirable to one group but not the other, the phenomena are now being labeled in two mutually exclusive ways, and this is giving the false impression that the drug in question has produced two different phenomena. Some people maintain that belief kills describes a number of instances from a variety of different cultures and belief heals. A self-willed death etc. is an extreme form of a culture-specific syndrome or mass psychogenic illness that produces a particular form of psychosomatic or psychophysiological disorder which results in a psychogenic death. Rubel spoke of culture-bound syndromes, which were those from which members of a particular group claim to suffer and for which their culture provides an etiology, diagnosis, preventive measures, and regimens of healing. Certain anthropologists, such as Robert Hahn and Arthur Kleinman, have extended the placebo-slash-nospo distinction into this realm in order to allow a distinction to be made between rituals, like faith healing, that are performed in order to heal, cure, or bring benefit in others, like pointing the bone, that are performed in order to kill, injure, or bring harm. As the meaning of the two interrelated and opposing terms has extended, we now find anthropologists speaking, in various contexts, of nospo or placebo rituals. Yet, it may become even more terminologically complex, for, as Hahn and Kleinman indicate, there can also be cases where there are paradoxical nospo outcomes from placebo rituals, as well as paradoxical placebo outcomes from nospo rituals. Writing from his extensive experience of treating cancer at Sydney Hospital, 
Milton warned of the impact of the delivery of a prognosis, and how many of his patients, upon receiving their prognosis, simply turned their face to the wall and died a premature death. There is a small group of patients in whom the realization of impending death is a blow so terrible that they are quite unable to adjust to it, and they die rapidly before the malignancy seems to have developed enough to cause death. This problem of self-willed death is in some ways analogous to the death produced in primitive peoples by witchcraft. That might entail nospo or placebo procedures, about which subjects might have nospo or placebo beliefs, that are delivered by operators that might have nospo or placebo expectations, that are delivered to subjects that might have nospo or placebo expectations about the ritual which are delivered by operators who might have nospo or placebo intentions, in the hope that the rituals will generate nospo or placebo outcomes, and, that all of this depends upon the operator's overall beliefs in the harmful nature of the nospo ritual or the beneficial nature of the placebo ritual.